The supernatural power of the kingdom of God is about to invade your world. to Extreme Prophetic. My name is Patricia King, and I'm glad that you've joined us for today's program. It's going to be dynamite. We're talking about the religious spirit and how to overcome it. Vassal Malik is our special guest today, and he has lots of insight on it, so stay tuned for the entire program. We're beginning a series today, it's starting with um, just uncovering the religious spirit, exposing it, and uh, helping you understand how to overcome it. And then in the next two programs, we are going to feature the political spirit and exposing it and showing you how to overcome it. And so I'm really excited about uh, this particular program. We have Fassel Malik with us. Fassel, you and Sabina are such good friends of ours, and I so respect you as a minister of the gospel, as a prophet of God. And, uh, but also as just really good friends um, to Ron and I personally and also to our team. So welcome we, to this you. program. Thank you. We love and respect you very much. Yeah, Ron, it's just it's God's kind of given us a heart for each other so that we can advance his kingdom together. I love it. But um, Fassel, we want to look at this scripture today. Um, it's the words of Jesus Christ. Mark chapter 8 and in verse 15 it says, Jesus was giving orders right. to his disciples saying, Watch out. And I've got an exclamation mark in my Bible. Watch out. Beware. Now, those yeah. are strong words. So when Jesus says words like that, he wants us to take note. Beware of the leaven of the Pharisees and the leaven of Herod. Mm. So uh, the Pharisees is the religious spirit, I believe, and the leaven of Herod is the political spirit, which we'll get to later. Sure. But this leaven of the Pharisees is the religious system, the religious spirit of that day. And he was saying to his, his disciples, you've got to watch out for this religious spirit. If you don't watch out for it and walk through the, the, the minefields and its ways, it could, it could try to capture you. That's right. It won't if we're following Jesus, but it can. So we need to be aware of this. So what are your thoughts on this? Well, first thing when you mention that scripture is that I believe the reason that Jesus had such a charge and a command in his spirit was that there was a two different ways. Like the way we deal with the leaven of the Pharisees is not the same way we deal with the leaven of Herod. And I think there was already a caution in there that yes, beware of the leaven of the Pharisees, but you can't deal with the political spirit the same way you deal with the religious spirit. And like as we talk about the religious spirit right now, I think the key strategy is, is to understand that it's a very different process and we have to isolate the weaponry, we have to isolate God's strategy in dealing with the religious spirit. And I think that's key what's coming out and I just see there's so much in you about this because right. you, you know, you, you folks have conquered this thing many, many times in your ministry to take ground for the kingdom. And one of the key scriptures that I found gives me a lot of help with this spirit is this. Jesus spoke to the Sadducees and he said this. He says, you know you err. There's an error. He goes, you err because you know not the scriptures nor the power of God. So the religious spirit has a form of godliness but it has no power associated right. with it. So that's first one of the litmus tests, I believe, Patricia, mm -hmm. is to see where is the revelation and the life and the power of God in operation, or is it just a program, a duty that we're mm -hmm. doing that has no power with it? Is it a form mm -hmm. or is it a substance? Yeah, there's always like a form of godliness that goes with the religious spirit. A lot of times when we talk about religious spirit, uh, people think it's a demon, which it is. But even beyond that, it's actually, I believe that the religious spirit, for the most part, is the spirit of man or the soul of man, the carnal okay. nature of man trying to take its place of rule. And we see that kind of right in the Garden of Eden, don't we, in, in the book of Genesis, where we see God's created Adam and Eve, and they're all one big happy family in the Garden. And they've got this relationship because the kingdom's about relationship. That's right. Religion's about systems. Wow. Um, the the kingdom is about being with God, hanging with God, um, eating off that tree of life. But the religious spirit is about knowledge. It's about what you know and how you can, can control things by knowledge, by understanding. 
the kingdom of God and our walk with the Lord is all about living as we're led by the spirit. Whereas the religious spirit, it likes to get all cozy inside of structures. Now, mm -hmm. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with godly structures, ones that sure. he initiates, because of course, day and night even is a structure, sure. seasons are that's structures right. that God put in place. So I'm not trying to, you know, sure. um, say that that's not, uh, you know, s structures are bad. But some structures we try to live under because we like um, the control we have with our own understanding our own carnal soul and how we can live inside those structures makes us feel good and every religion on the face of the earth is actually based on that principle that it's from the rule of man it's the the carnal rule of man i understand this and adam and eve actually sold out to that. their birthright really of being with god uh, walking through the garden, having this relationship, eating off the tree of life, you know, just enjoying his presence to go into a system because they ate off the tree of the knowledge of good and evil and then tried to work it out themselves out of their own mind, what's good, what's evil, make this choice, that choice. Mm -hmm. And that's what religion is based on, trying to de de determine what is good. Okay, here's the rules for good, obey mm -hmm. that. Here's the rules for evil, stay away from that. This is how you can, you can, you know, if you do the evil, you can mm -hmm. overcome it by doing this work or that work. But it's all about man. It's about man's rule versus God's right. rule. And you came out of a religious background, yes, didn't you? Yes, very. A religious system yes. that probably sounds a lot like oh, that. Oh, very much. When I'm hearing this, I'm like, yeah, absolutely. You know, you grow up with that. You know, a lot of times I think people, when they get caught up in an environment like this, of a religious spirit environment, it's because their heart is usually right. They start out with the right heart, Patricia. But what happens is they don't know. They start to get ingrained in a system. And there comes a time in their life, they're like, wait a minute, what's wrong? I'm no longer free. I, my heart is not beating the way it used to. And now you're confined in something, and then you become an expression of that religious mindset or that religious system. You know, that's what happened to me growing up as a Muslim. I know, and even, you know, Luke 11.35 says, take heed that the light in you be not darkness. Mm -hmm. So sometimes we can get information and light about knowledge, like wow. you said. But it says, take heed the light in you be not wow. darkness. And Matthew six says if the light in you be darkness how great is that darkness so there's a danger here because if we just take knowledge and we don't take the rhema life revelation life of God that he's coming from the Spirit of God unveiling the scriptures to yeah. our heart then what we're doing is we're kind of stepping into that category in 2nd Corinthians 3 where it talks about the letter kills but the Spirit gives right. life and you know we see this in Exodus 32 Moses comes down and the law comes the letter of the law comes and what happens is 3,000 people drop dead but in Acts chapter 2, when the Spirit of God comes, 3,000 people are born again. And that's not a coincidence. Wow. It's really a fulfillment of the letter does actually kill. That and I think is we, amazing. Can you say that again? Well, I want to make sure, um, all you viewers, I want to make sure you catch this. This is, this is um, a real revelation. Well, it says in 2 Corinthians 3 that the, the letter kills, but the Spirit gives life. Now, the law came down in Exodus 32 when yeah. Moses came from the mountain. And you know what happened? 3,000 people died because they were worshiping a calf. 3,000 people died that day. That's what it says in Exodus 32. Then the Holy Spirit comes under a greater excellence of glory and 3,000 people get born again I've Patricia. never seen Why? that because before. the letter kills now here's the key about the religious spirit cool. it uses the letter of the law to kill yes whereas the new covenant the ministry of the new covenant is to use the life of the word to build and to give life yeah. and to cause the Spirit of God to give us life so this is a system that gets ingrained once we begin to follow it that you can say the right thing but you can say it the wrong way and the end result is death Wow. So the power is getting a hold of the Holy Spirit that is vibrant in life. And Jesus said this. He said, these words I speak to you, they are spirit, spirit and, and they're life. life. <laughs> so it's the life that comes out of Jesus. And you know, that's the key. He didn't speak the shell of the seed of that word. He spoke the life that was in that word. And anything that disturbs the life, you have to be aware of. Now, I just want to go um, somewhere with, with, with this because I know your background, how, how you came to Christ. So when you first came to Christ, when I first came to Christ, it was like, yeah, it's awesome. Yeah. You know, and we were, we were hit by the Spirit of God. I mean, the Spirit yes. of God filled us. He touched us. He overwhelmed us. And it's like, then we started following the Spirit. We were led by the Spirit. We didn't know that that's what it was. It was the most sure. natural thing to do. When you're in the kingdom, it's the most natural thing to do is to follow the Spirit. In fact, in Romans 8, 11, it says, For all who are being led by the Spirit of God, these are the sons, sons of God. God. So sons of the kingdom are those who are led by the Spirit of God. And we didn't know it. We just had a hunger for the Word, and we're reading it day and night. And We, we didn't feel like we had to read the Word. We just wanted to we read wanted the Word to, yeah. because the Spirit was leading, and we were leading people to Jesus. 
tell us what happened to you after a while. You know, you're in all this freedom, you're leading people to Jesus, and then, and, and by the way, you didn't even go to church at that time, I don't think. Yeah, I just started going, going to church, I think, just shortly after that. After I came to Christ in that encounter, I had an overwhelming love. Because I know people, Jesus loved people. That's all I knew, and I had no idea how to do it. But I knew that for God would do anything to help someone get saved. And we used to go, my saving mobile used to call the car, go sit down <laughs> in a restaurant, minister to people. And what I would see is, you know, the scripture's coming to me that unless you become like a child, you cannot enter the That's kingdom it. of God. And in my innocence, in, my, in what the world will call your like a child in my innocence not having the knowledge of good and evil at that time just having the innocence I'm sitting there and I'm yielding to the Holy Spirit because I know no other way to do this so as I yield to the Holy Spirit I see the gifts of the Spirit operating which I don't even know what they are and I see the power <laughs> of the Holy Spirit operating and I see the Spirit of God coming and the glory descending and people getting saved Muslims Hindus Sikhs Jews atheists why because I was just yielding innocently yeah. to the Holy Spirit I was doing this thing that you just read in Romans then I got acquainted a little bit and you know um, you know I, I, I needed to get more educated right church Mm -hmm. really wanted to educate me and so some of the structures that I began to be part of and some of the education I noticed the litmus test was that my salvation count started to go down and the reason was that I began to embrace structure because we're hungry when we're hungry sure. we embrace whatever's put before us and so I began to embrace structure not realizing structure is very important but structure is only designed to support the substance of heaven and my 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 benefit was or my privilege I would say was I tasted the substance of Jesus before I tasted the structure of man and so you and were ruined. I, I was ruined by Jesus. <laughs> but in, in the midst of it all, Patricia, the beautiful thing, like we talked about divine process, is that in the midst of that structure, even in religious structures that I've been in, I was able to follow a higher order or a divine order of God or a divine process. Well, in the midst of structure, he taught me, as you said, humility. And he taught it. me to live above it. And then in the midst of it, he brought me out of it and then gave us liberty to help other people become free and walk in their destiny. It's but wonderful. it's a process, Patricia. Yes. But it's, it's worth going. Remember something, we can never give up on God's plan for our life. God has not given up on us. Doesn't matter what situation someone is in. Exactly. Doesn't matter how bad it looks. Doesn't matter how much it's a lie compared to what God has spoken to you. If we come before Jesus and we humble ourselves like you mm -hmm. always teach, Patricia, then God can bring us out into a place of mm -hmm. liberty. As Fassel was sharing his story about how he got inside of, you know, uh, structure and, and, and knowledge and that, someone watching this program right now, you just said, oh my gosh, that's me and my salvation counts went down just like that. No, there's nothing wrong with seeking the spirit for understanding and knowledge or, or attending a seminar or getting trained. But you see the spirit or the carnal part of us that likes to eat off that tree of knowledge and good and evil, sometimes will do that exchange instead of just following the spirit. The spirit can follow you and lead you and teach you inside of the structure even, but it's where our heart is. And so I just want to encourage you um, it, it, especially that person that was saying, oh my gosh, that was me. Everything can be restored and God's going to teach you how that happened and how to bring your heart back into that childlike place. The childlike spirit is a real key to overcoming the religious spirit. You know, I always think, okay, do I have my childlike heart in place or is it being challenged? And if it's challenged, then I have to say, Lord, help me get back into that simplicity of the gospel and the simplicity of faith. We're going to take a break and we'll be right back. Well, here we are in God Talk, and we're just talking more about how to overcome, how to identify first and then overcome, because once we can identify a spirit, it's easier right. to overcome it. But um, I find, facile that Matthew 23 is one of the most key portions of Scripture that exposes religious spirit. Sure. And Jesus just calls it for what it is. Man, you know, a lot of times, you know, we, we read in the Bible, of course, that Jesus is humble and meek and all that. But man, could he... Could he speak some sharp yes. words too, you know? But he helps us here understand in this whole chapter. And if you're uh, watching, you know, the uh, program and you don't have a Bible handy, I'd say just read through Matthew 23, the whole chapter, because we don't have time to unpack it all for you right now. Sure. I know that I do um, a teaching about overcoming the religious spirit, and we go into a lot of this in detail, but we can't do it here right now. So you read your Bible. Um, at home and meditate, the Holy Spirit will teach you. But I'd like to highlight right now, Fassel, uh, verse 13. Okay. It says, Jesus says this, Jesus said this, but woe to you, scribes, Pharisees, and hypocrites, because you shut off the kingdom of heaven from people, for you do not enter in yourselves, nor do you allow those who are entering to go in. 
That's dangerous, Patricia. That is really dangerous. And I'm really familiar with, with that one. Because, you know, Jesus has showed us just in our childlike faith uh, things about the kingdom and the excitement of the kingdom and signs and wonders. And, and so, you know, we just love sharing the goodness of God. And we're not worshiping signs or anything. Of course, we, sure. we worship Him. But there's so much contention over this thing. And we say, come, you know, the kingdom's open. The heavens are open. Come, enjoy His presence. And then the people that don't understand, and these are really good people. I'm not saying sure, anything sure. about the people. But when we're influenced by a religious spirit, we'll start to go into our own understanding. It says in uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 2, that the natural man cannot comprehend the things of the spirit. It's right. foolishness to him. So Jesus is saying that, and he's addressing this religious spirit. He says, you're shutting off the kingdom of heaven from people, for you don't enter in yourselves. You don't mm -hmm. allow those who are entering to go in. So these ones that sometimes oppose us, they, they don't experience themselves, so they don't want anyone else to experience it because they can't wrap their head around it. We have to be very careful about that. It's very interesting. It's the total opposite message of Jesus. Jesus said the kingdom of God is within reach. Right. So he wanted the kingdom to be experienced by all, and the kingdom of God is within us. So Jesus says the kingdom of God is within reach. You can grasp it. You can partake of it if you just become like a little child. But this spirit, the religious spirit, is in a total opposite, where it actually stands in the way. And it really says you've got to go through me. That's kind of the attitude of it. Right. You, only I can get you through there. But then there's a wall because they can't go in themselves because they won't, because it's foolishness because their natural mind becomes the block. But it's literally the same opposite of what Jesus preached, that it's in reach. Wow. Well, um, in church history, there were times when the priests would tell the people they weren't even allowed to read the word right? because they weren't able to understand it. And sometimes today, we say to people, well, you can't do this because it's, it's beyond you, or you can't do that because it's beyond you. And it's like, you need more training, you need more understanding, you need more this. But it's going right back mm -hmm. into you know, the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, rather than just walking with Holy Spirit um, as a child, and of course studying out the scripture, but letting the Holy Spirit bring confirmation and bring enlightenment. You know, the real thing behind it, Patricia, is that that religious spirit wants to have a system and a kingdom of its own. And it's, it's a clash because the kingdom of Jesus is alive, it's substance, you know, and it's living in us, it's moving in us, the kingdom of God is everywhere, and so it's moving and moving through us, but the religious system is just like a contained way of living life, and it, and it wants to grow because in the same text it says, in verse 15 it says, Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, you hypocrites, for you go all across sea and land to just convert one person, but when you convert him, you make him twofold more the child of hell than yourselves. Whoa. That's a pretty big statement. It's like, so there's an element of conversion. There's an element of growth. There's an element of expansion. And, and there's a nobility about it saying we want more people to believe in the system. So the heart is right is what I'm trying to say, Patricia. But there's something wrong with the spirit which lays hold and says, I want you to get saved. I want you to come into the kingdom. But then I want to make you worse than you were off. Wow. You know, and, and, and I think that's part of the challenge. And I know people, they sometimes feel that way. They yeah. feel like when I came to Christ, my life started this way. But what's happened to me? You know, wow. I, I'm miserable. I love Jesus. I know I'm going to heaven, but I'm living like a bag of lemons. I really believe God's going to deliver um, the Western church, especially yes. from the grip of this religious spirit that's trying to keep it inside of structures that, that keep the life of heaven and the glory of God in his presence from, from being ushered in. Because, like, when I think of the Western church, and, you know, I love the church. I think, yes, you know, absolutely. it's awesome. And I believe a lot of good things are, are, sure. are taking place. A lot of benevolent programs and, and, and things like that. Are, you know, I mean, all those things are good. But we're missing something. Because when you look at the church and its structure and the way people respond, you don't, you don't see the life in them like how you see in the gospel of Jesus right. Christ. It's like we're missing the model. When we look at the model within the scripture, where is it in what we would call the institution of the church? Right. And is it because we've been kind of put inside of a system uh, that has no life in it? And like you said in the beginning, we've held to a form of, of godliness, but we've denied the power. That's right. And it says, avoid such men as these. It's, very, it's, very, it's a very cautious place, even as a Muslim, Patricia. I, gr I guess I grew up with this structure, and I think the key here is that even when we evangelize and reach people, is that we have to give them the substance of Jesus before they taste our structure. Because the structure is designed to contain. Peter wanted structure. He wanted to build that tabernacle. And you know what? Jesus said, no. 
This is substance. It's, it's a living substance that's going to be available to all people. And I want it to be free. I want it to be able to move in us. And in our heart, you know, there's, there's a little bit of a key that I have. You know, there's someone that's probably watching right now. And, you know, you have a tendency that you want to rebel against the structure that you're in right now. The answer is not rebellion. Here's the answer. You need to embrace the substance in the midst of your structure till the substance goes so huge on the inside of you that your structure can no longer contain you so don't rebel because the tendency is the enemy wants you to rebel against the structure that you feel confined in that's not wisdom wisdom is to embrace the substance in the midst of your structure and allow that pressure of that substance to build and get denser and denser and denser till the substance in you removes the structure that confines you so that you can be unspotted and unmarked and you can walk forth in pure into the substance that Jesus has for you. Wow, those were fighting words. There's one more, there's one more here I want to look at, and it's verse 29. Okay. It says, Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for you build the tombs of the prophets, wow. the forerunners, the yeah. proclaimers of what God's about to do, and adorn the monuments of the righteous, and say, if we'd been living in the days of our fathers, we would not have been partners with them in the shedding of the blood of the prophets. So you testify against yourselves. Wow. Now, one thing I noticed that the religious spirit does, it, it tries to stop the forerunning voice of the prophet. Wow. It says, no, we don't want this. And it's, you know, they talk about, you know, um, you know, the days of old, oh yeah, that was wrong what they did to Jesus and they shouldn't have done that. And you know, those Pharisees, they were this and that. And yet we still see the same thing today. And that's what Jesus is saying. He said, you've got to look at yourself. We all have to look at ourselves. We can't point our finger at a brother or a sister and say, wow, they've got a religious spirit. We have to look at ourselves, and we have to say, am I wanting everything fresh that you want to bring, Lord? Am I wanting to walk with you? Am I wanting to, to listen to your voice, no matter who's proclaiming it? Is it, do I discern your voice? And if so, I want to make a way for it. I don't want to build a tomb sure. for the prophet. I don't want to kill them, annihilate the voice that you are trying to bring forth. Because when God does something new, it doesn't make sense to the mind. That's right. We've not been that way before. So, you know, you have to go by the spirit. But the religious spirit will try to kill that voice always. So we have to examine our own heart and make sure that we don't have that spirit operating within us. Wow. wow. Well, awesome. I mean, there's so many insights we could have about the religious okay. spirit, but it's been great um, sharing time with you today, Likewise, Basil. Sure, yeah. And uh, you're, you're a man who's overcome religious well, spirit <laughs> and religious systems because of just knowing Jesus. It's and he way. is the overcomer in That's you. Right. He's the overcomer yeah. in me. And we need each That's other, right. you do. know, because we all have a tendency, don't we, to, to sometimes lean to our understanding That's or right. that religious part of us. That's right. And I don't know about you, but I sure don't want to be in the grip no. of that thing. And, and I'm sure that you don't want to be in the grip of that spirit either. And uh, we just need each other because we have tendencies that we can lean to our own understanding and le sure. instead of leaning to him. May you be completely delivered. May you be completely set free from any oppression that the spirit of religion has put on you or pushed against you with or even filled you with. May you know the freedom and the liberty that's in Jesus Christ. May you know the power that's in his kingdom and his name. Destiny Words are prophetic words of encouragement from the heart of God just for you. When you heard Patricia say that they make the tombs of the prophets, I saw you, you're a prophet, and you're sitting there, and you feel like you're in a tomb because the nature of the religious spirit is to use the human nature of man, the carnal nature of man, to prepare a tomb for you when they see you dying. And what I see the Father saying to you right now is that, you know, man provides a tomb for you when he sees you dying, but the Father looks for the tomb you're buried in so he can raise you up. And I see the Father coming right now and raising you up out of the tomb of religion that has tried to confine you. And you thought your calling was hopeless. You thought it's all gone. I have news for you. The Father is on the lookout for you. And he's coming to your dark tomb. And he's going to raise you up. And he's going to bring you up so that you can live in his presence and fulfill your call. I'm seeing a young girl right now. And uh, you're from India. And you're watching this program. And you're fascinated by it. And you've been stirred for a while in fact god's been really moving on your heart and he's put some divine appointments in your midst where you've met people that have shared about jesus but you've been pondering and you've been watching christians and noticing that 
uh, some of the ones that you've seen are, are, are walking in in so much joy and it's a joy that you desire to have on the inside but you don't and you feel like you're living in all kinds of confinements and and you know you've, you've got to do this to be accepted you've got to do that to be accepted but no matter what you do it seems like it's never enough and you're tormented by by never being able to achieve um, the righteousness and the justice that that you want to um, live in and so you've been frustrated and you've been longing for freedom and you've been watching this program today and you think oh that's it it's a religious spirit that's put me in this trap and right now Jesus is coming to you and he's knocking on the door of your heart and he's saying can I come in would you invite me in I'd like to be your God I would like to be the God that you serve. And you have served other gods, but Jesus said, I, I want to be your gods. If you just tell those other gods to go in my name, they will go. If you make me your God, I will bring liberty into your life and I will give you a brand new life right now. And it's so easy. All you have to do is ask him into your heart, say, Lord Jesus, I believe that you are God. You are the the God of all gods and I want you to be my God you are the God that I will name as my personal God my personal Savior come into my heart now forgive me of all my sins forgive me uh, for worshiping false gods and false idols you come into me and be my God right now and um, wow and I just see you saying yes within your spirit and you're doing that and the Spirit of God's on you right now you can actually feel his presence that is the presence of Jesus Christ and honey you're getting born again that's that's what we call this it's born again It's what Fassel talked about earlier that he came into this it's awesome and that is what makes you a child of Jesus and once he's in your heart He'll never leave you. He'll never forsake you. And if you go online at extremeprophetic.com, we have a whole bunch of material on Meet Jesus Online that will lead you um, into you know, Bible studies, what the Bible says about the freedom that you've just received. You've been learning about the religious spirit. It gains power through our soulish wisdom. It gains power through our mental programs that we put into place. Many times, you know, you start out with a right heart, but sometimes you yield to systems in your mind because you're comfortable with control in your own life. The secret is, as Patricia has been saying, we yield ourselves to the Holy Spirit and we allow Him to continuously be working on us in a fresh way, taking us from one degree of revelation of Himself onto another because there's new things He's doing in this era and the more closely and intimately you walk with the Spirit of God, we have power over the Spirit and we see what God is doing. Thanks so much for joining us on today's program. It's been great having you. And you know, we can all walk in freedom in the Holy Spirit as we just humble ourselves and rest in Him. We never have to fear being gripped by a religious spirit or, or being oppressed by one or being controlled by one because we have the Holy Spirit to bring us into freedom. The scripture says that where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. And my prayer for you is that you're going to walk in that glorious liberty all the days of your life. Now here's a special, sweet, and precious word for you. God loves you with an everlasting love. He really does. And don't you forget it, okay?